Okay, all right, it's Dan Shalom. I'm Officer Kalaya. Today, the topic is the ultimate sacrifice. All right, I know by now, um, the bishops, deacons, captains, they, the level of understanding when it comes to sacrifice has been elevated <clears throat> in this truth and uh, across the earth based on the understanding that is being pushed on the earth right now through the spirit of Christ by our leadership. Here, Israel united in Christ, all praise to the Most High. Unfortunately, the world is still in a stupor when it comes to what sacrifice is and what our ultimate sacrifice had to be. Now, I won't, I won't front. When I was looking for videos, I did find some videos that were, they were kind of uh, in the area. But, you know, you always find them, those ones that are way far to the left. So we're going to check out a couple of videos real quick just to go into and show the uh, the mindset that many of us had to break away from when it comes to understanding what sacrifice is and the mindset that many of our people are still in today, to this day, when it comes to sacrifice. All right? So let's pull up the first bit, uh, the first brother, the first bald head pastor. Pull him up. What did he say? Uh your gifts will make room for you and everybody takes that and they make they make that to believe or your talents and your gifts and I'll make room for you is it no it's like no your sacrifice what you bring to the altar what you give to me hold up god y'all gotta catch it you know these these pastors they real slick with how they say things man they stay they they they, they hit you with it and then they they transition and pivot real quick so that you didn't you didn't catch it back it up a little bit can we do that yeah, back it up just a little bit. You know what I mean? And uh, you got to listen to this, uh, brother. Your gift will make room for you. And everybody takes that and they make they make that to believe or your talents and your gifts. And I'll make room for you. Is it? No, he's like, no, your sacrifice, what you bring to the altar, what you give to me. Pause. He says, your, what you bring to the altar, your sacrifice, what you give to me. This is what he's, this is what he, he's, he, the point that he's really trying to drive home. You need to sacrifice your funds and give to me. He's going to say it. Press play. God, that's what's going to make room for you. Not your talent. What you're willing to pay. Pause. Said, I Pause. What you're willing to pay. You think he, what you think he's talking about? We all know what these Christian pastors are talking about when they say, bring your, bring your gift to me. What you're willing to pay me. But he had to throw God in there to make a, a quick transition. Play on. I cannot offer up to God that which costs me nothing. So there's got to be a sacrifice, right? So that's the gift. And so that may be, that's a paradigm shift for, for many of us. It was for me. Yeah. What did he say? He wants you to bring all your money. Let's go to the next video. Yep. See, see, when you talk about a sacrifice, that means giving your all. That means leaving everything you have there for God. But I got for you god is not asking you for any debt sacrifice Pause. because his this is this is how you know they missed the whole understanding in the bible he says god is not asking you for a dead sacrifice remember that he says god is not asking you for a dead sacrifice remember that point as we you know get the class started and get the rolling on through because we got a couple more videos but he said god is not asking you for a dead sacrifice but we're gonna find out here shortly play on his son has already made that offering. His son made that offering way back 2,000 years ago at Calvary when he hung, bled, and died. He made the dead offering. He offered his life. And now what he asked for a living. See, see, when right, you go to the next video, I want these videos are just to show you and, and the way that they talk, the way that they talk, you got to be real mindful when you shouldn't even be listening to these folks. Obviously, their understanding of the Bible, their understanding of sacrifice, their understanding of keeping God's commandments, none of that has worked for the black community. None of that has worked for us as a whole at no point on the earth. So that, you know, that alone shows that they have no understanding that we shouldn't be following these leaders. All right, pull up the next video. Here go the sister. Now we played the brothers, but here go, this, here go our sister, the black woman. It gets worse with these sisters, boy. Come on. Good morning. Happy Thursday. 
So this morning I was reading and studying my word and praying to God. And I feel like God revealed to me the importance of sacrificing in your finances. See, um, see pause, I, pause, I, just pause. You see how, you see what, you see what all of their, their mental capacity goes into sacrificing your money, sacrificing in your finances. We're gonna find out. You're gonna we're gonna we a lot of us know this, but for those of you, today might be your first day, it might be your first week, it might be your first year. You still may be lacking understanding on uh why we have to bring these things out. We gotta prophesy and bring these things out over and over and over to our people. Because as our people wake up and come into this truth, a lot of them are still coming from this mentality. All right? All of us, a lot of us are still stuck in this mentality. You think the sacrifice is your money. You think the sacrifice is you stop eating pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster. That's the sacrifice you got to make to get to the kingdom of heaven. Well, we're going to go into it a little bit. And it's, it's not a new understanding uh, that's on the earth. The bishops, they've been bringing this out. But it's something that has to be hammered over and over and over again because a lot of us fear this level of sacrifice that we're going to have to make. Play on. I always give him my ties, but I know this come this past week I did a major sacrifice for someone uh, just by helping them out and and just being in their corner, and I just believe God is going to bless me financially. Just God, we all believe that if if we if God is going to bless us because we gave up some money. Hey, the sister that's coming on next, she's going to tell you about your money. Play on. Let's finish her out. Get to the next one. Because of that sacrifice I I gave. And it's just important that when it comes to your fi finances, that you just trust God and follow him and 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 just leave with she can't, she allow know she, God to you see, you. They she's trying to make it up. She's trying to make up what she's saying as she's saying it. It's all coming from nowhere. She's it's not it's not scriptural. She's pulling this out of the back of her mind. And, and, and conjuring up whatever she can conjure up to make our people believe, and a lot of our people believe, hey, she the righteous sister. They look at us like we the niggas. We just a, a bunch of niggas in purple. But she's the righteous and holy one. She got to understand that God dealing with her. Yeah, right. Play on. With how you should spend your money and how you should, you know, do your finances. And you will receive God's provision for every area of your life. Well, we gonna Have see if that got anything to do with. Play, bring up, bring up the, bring up grandma. Put grandma on the screen. Grandma, <laughs> grandma got something to tell you. Listen to what grandma say. Why in the world do you keep saying that you're giving your money to God instead of telling the <laughs> truth? You're giving your money to the hold fast. on, hold on. Look at, look at her face. Look at her mouth. She disgusted, man. She disgusted, but she got at least. She's stuck in the Christian church, y'all. She's still stuck in the Christian church, but she got common enough sense. Why well, ain't giving you my light bill? I'm not giving you my rent. God don't need my rent money. <laughs> Ray, run it, run it back. Look at her face. Why in the world do you keep saying that you're giving your money to God instead of telling the truth? You're giving your money to the pastor. Why you keep doing this here? Why you keep doing it? Leave God out of the equation, y'all, because y'all keep acting like God broke. This God money. This God, God ain't giving you no money and then he gonna take it back. What's wrong with you? Whatever God gives you, he gives you to do what you want to do with it. Just say you want to give the money to the pastor and stop saying you're giving it to God because God ain't broke. He owned the moon and Saturn and Pluto, y'all. She owned all the stars I'm in the sorry. sky. Hey, she got she from South Carolina, y'all. She got to be. She got to be from South Hey, she hey, you, she's from South Carolina. I'm, we gonna we're gonna go ahead and claim the sister. We can tell by her speech. Play on. And then, let me tell you this here. If he give you a building, he qualified to take care of it. He qualified to send somebody your way to pay the building off. That's the kind of God I serve. Now I don't know what God you talking about. The God I serve is rich. He's on the whole world. He don't need your money, not the God I serve. Now if your God wants you to give your money to the pastor, just say that. And stop saying, your God, you're giving money to God like he broke and he needs your money. No man needs your money, not God. Mm. Hey, she said I talk to you later. She said a mouthful. She said a mouthful for... You Christians that are sitting in the church right beside her. A lot of a lot of the people that she's talking about, they sitting right beside her. She's sitting there, she she's 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 just sitting there, she clutching her purse like this. They pass collection plate around, she don't even touch it. She just she she slide back like that right there. Let the plate, let the collection plate go on past her. She ain't finna put her money in there. 
She at least got that much sense. All right? Play the next clip. Last one, I believe. Then we're gonna hit, then we're gonna knock knock some scriptures down. Now everybody know this sister right here. Bishop talk about this sister all the time. This is your uh your what you what you call him? Your evangelist Juanita Bitem. If you read the top, what the top right there say, bro? Read the top of that. Juanita Bitem said God said 21 people must sacrifice a thousand dollars to equal twenty one thousand. Okay, now let's let, let's play. Twenty-one people in this building that God said will give a thousand dollars. He said, twenty-one people in this building, come now wherever you are. Give me an envelope. Give me some envelopes. He said, twenty-one people, come now wherever you are. A thousand dollars ain't nothing in comparison to what God's gonna do. I See didn't that? call for buckets yet, y'all. Come on. It ain't nothing. There's promotions that you want. You're not gonna get it until you make that sacrifice to God. Line up right here. I you know see what that? I'm talking about. You see, you see how she get them, right? She know that there's individuals in her church that got that thousand dollars. She know that already. She's already gauged in, 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 in the what do you call it? The treasurers are have are they know all the people in the church that got the money. So she know 21 people in there can afford a thousand dollars. Because 21 people in there has probably given a thousand dollars on one occasion or another before. But she must got a big bill she gotta pay right now. She need them 21,000. She said 21 people in here got $1,000. And what does she do? She she invoked them and pro, pro, provoked them to give the money by saying, that promotion you want, that car that you want, this thing that you want, God said you can't have it until you until you bring that $1,000 to the altar. Play on. Older and younger. I know you're in here because the prophecy don't lie. Now you see they start the coming up. The Spirit of the Lord don't lie. The Spirit of the Lord don't lie. They walking up. The Spirit of the Lord don't lie. He's not a lying spirit. He said 21 people in here. If God wasn't talking, nobody would have moved. He said 21 people in this building. That's what he means. He said 21 people in this building. How do I know God is talking to me? Because you got it. That's how I know God is talking to you. Because it's in your account right now. Because it's on your credit card right now. That's how I know God is talking to you. Hey, she must have... Uh... <laughs> She must have did this around tax time. She had to. She must. She she must have did this right here around tax time, because who in their right mind gonna get up and go hand this woman a thousand dollars? She said twenty one people in here right now got 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 a thousand dollars. It's on your bank. It's in your bank account. It's on your credit card. Showing you that that's the that's the mentality of all these pastors, man. TD snakes, Creflo, uh, steal, uh, Creflo little dollars, steal your dollars. All of them, every last one of them, they about the money. All right, let's jump into these scriptures. First, let me get, uh, let's get Micah 3 and 11 real quick. We ain't forget the topic is sacrifice because that's what they are using to say what the sacrifice is. Your sacrifice is your money. We're going to find out. Read uh, Micah, Micah 3 and 11. Let me get there with you. Go ahead. It's the book of Micah, chapter 3, verse 11. Uh-huh. The heads thereof judge for reward. It says the heads of these churches, they judge for a reward. That's what they judge for. They get put in a position because of the money. They judge and they do what they do every week for the money. 21000 Read. And the priests thereof teach for hire. They teach for hire. That's what they're doing. Read on. They don't that? No, sir. Read. And the prophets therefore divine for money. They divine for what? Divine for money. They divine for money. Yet. Will they lean upon the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us? You see that? That's why she said, God said. God said. It's 21 of y'all got, that got $1,000. From there, give me uh, Malachi 3 and 8. Just to hit these uh, pastor scriptures real quick. Malachi 3 and 8. It's the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? That, there you go. That's how they get you. That's how they get you every week. Will he read it again? Will a man rob God? How many times have you heard that in your Christian church? Creflo Dollar around here with a $65 million jet. They be giving gifts, gold toilet bowls and, 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 and all type of uh, 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 trinkets clothed, I mean, designed in silver because of the money that they got, the money that they share between each other. Read on. Will a man rob God? Come on. Yet ye have robbed me. Uh huh. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? And we say, Where, wherein have we robbed thee? Come on. In tithes and offerings. That's where they get you at. They are tricking you to give you their money. And a lot of us been tricked 
You know, a lot of us thought that we could go, we could sin all week long. And then on Sunday, we go and give tithes and, and pay for our sins that we committed all, all, all week. We go once a month, the first of the month, and you give your money, put, put $100, $150 in the collection plate because you think that you can uh, buy your sins away. We think we can pay for our sins. Giving the money is, a, is, is something like an atonement for the sins that we've committed throughout the week and throughout the month. Nah, this sacrifice is way bigger than that, man. This sacrifice is going way heavier than you thought. Give me Jeremiah 6. In verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 13. And Lord's will, this, this, uh, these scriptures that we hit this morning go out. And, uh, and scriptures don't go out for it anyway. But somebody out here is dealing with this. Somebody is new in the truth right now that is trying to pull away from giving the pastor their light bill every month. Giving the pastor their rent every month. Read that. It's the book of Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 13. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them. Everyone is given to covetousness. That's these pastors. That's why they got to have the limousines. They got to have the newest Bentley. They got to have the biggest house. You got a 15-bedroom house. It's just you and your wife. What you, you don't even know what, what 14 of the rooms look like. Literally. You don't know what 14 of the rooms look like in your house. Y'all can pull the stuff up if y'all if y'all get it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can put it on the screen. But uh, read that again. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, Come on. everyone is given to covetousness. Everyone is given to covetousness. Come on. And from the prophet, even unto the priest. From the prophet, even unto the priest. Your, these your, your modern day so-called prophets and priests that you uh, high esteem and hold at a, at a higher standard than everybody else in society. You hold your local pastors who mistaken your money, taking your grandma money and her mama money for all these years at a higher standard than men on the earth that are teaching you to keep the law, statutes, and commandments of God. Read. Everyone dealeth falsely. They all dealeth falsely. But the Lord, if you're here today, if you are new to the truth, you've been here for six months, whether well, you've been here for a year, you, 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 you've had to realize what was going on in your life. And you said something ain't right. What's going on? What 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 is my real calling on the earth? What is my real duty? What is the reason that I'm really here? All right? What is it that the Lord requires of me to do on this earth? Hey, give me that real quick in Deuteronomy. Get that in Deuteronomy real quick. Chapter 10, 12. That's what I want. It's the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 10, verse 12. And now Israel, what, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? So when you first learn that you're an Israelite, the, the, the next question is what, is, what 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 now? What next? What do you do once you learn that you're an Israelite? Once you read the curses and you come in and you find out like, dang, all these years I thought I was black. All these years I thought I was just a, a, a nigga. But now I realize that we're the chosen people of God. We're the Israelites that the Bible speaks of with undeniable proof out of the mouth of God. Read it again. And now, Israel. Uh -huh. What doth the Lord thy God require of thee? So when you realize that you're an Israelite, the Lord requires something from you. What does he require? Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. You got to learn to fear God. That's, a, that's what we have to learn to do. We have not been taught to fear God here in America. We've not been taught to fear God in our homes. We haven't learned these things. Our mother didn't know it. Our fathers didn't know it. Our pastors didn't know it. And they damn sure ain't teaching in this school. They took the scriptures out of school. We got to learn to fear the Lord our God. Come on. To walk in all his ways. We got to learn to walk in the ways of God. Come on. And to love him. Come on. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Read. To keep the commandments of the Lord. You ain't going to hear that in church. They're going to tell you that the laws of God are done away with, except for them tithes. Bring your tithe and offering. That ain't done. 10% of your paycheck, which you cannot find in the Bible. But all praise to the Most High. You've woken up. We've woken up. Now we're in this truth. What does God require for us? To keep the commandments of God. Give me uh, John chapter 10 and verse 27. Because this is the path that, we've all, that we all have chosen. This is how we've ended up here today. This is why we have daily bread. And many of you tune in because you want the medicine that you need to carry you out the day, to carry you and, and push you through the rest of the week until we get back to the Sabbath where we're amongst each other again. Read that. John, hold on, let me get there. John 10 and verse 27. Go ahead. It's the book of John, chapter 10, verse 27. Come on. 
My sheep hear my voice. So you are here because you're a sheep, all right? We are the sheep of the Most High God. We're the sheep of Christ. Christ said, my sheep hear my voice. Come on. And I know them. He says, and I know them. Read. And they follow me. And they follow me. So once we come into this truth to follow Christ, you always get a phone call when, when, when you uh <laughs> teaching. When you hear the voice of God, which we all have done, we now have to follow Christ. Why? How? By keeping the commandments of God. All right? Uh, so whether you this is your first day, your, your second day, your second month, we've all chosen to walk in this direction. Give me John chapter 15, 16 through 19. We're going to read that. John 15. It's the book of John, chapter 15 and verse 16. Ye have not chosen me. But a lot of us, don't. we don't take this into, into consideration. We didn't choose Christ. He says, my sheep hear my voice. We heard the voice of God. We bowed down our ear and we said, hold on, let me, let me see what's going on over here. Let me walk in this direction real quick. Read that again. Ye have not chosen me, uh -huh. but I have chosen you. The Lord chose us. Read on. And ordained you. Uh-huh. That ye should go and bring forth fruit. So now that the Lord has chosen us, he's ordained us and called us to bring forth fruit. Fruits of righteousness. Fruits of repentance. When people see us, that, that's what they're supposed to see. A walking, living example of Christ. Because we're going to have to make the same sacrifice that Christ made. Read. And that your fruit should remain. Our fruit should remain. Read. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, uh -huh. he may give it to you. Read on. These things I command you, uh -huh. that ye love one another. If the world hates you. If the world hates you, and we know the world hates us, we number three. We number three, all praise to the most high. We're going to have that number one spot soon. We're number three hated in the world. Come on. Ye know that it hated me before it hated you. It hated our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ first. Why? Because he was teaching our people repentance to keep the commandments. Read. If ye were of the world, if he was of the world, the world would love his own. The world would love his own. Why? Because you're doing every, you're doing the same thing that the world is doing. Read. But because you are not of the world, but because you are not of the world, because you have heard the voice of God, because the Lord has chosen thee. Read. But I have chosen you out of the world. He did what? I have chosen you out of the world. Come on. Therefore, the world hateth you. So you might as well get ready for the hate. The hate from your mother, the hate from your father, your sisters, your cousins, family members, friends. When you choose to put the fringes on with the borders of blue and to start keeping God's commandments, everything about your life is going to change. Everything about your life has changed as it should because you're no longer walking after the world. You're no longer walking after Satan. You're walking and following the voice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Give me Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, because that's where a lot of the sacrifice, uh, the sacrifice scriptures that these Christians were using on the videos, that's where it come from. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Come on. It's the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. That present a, what? Your bodies. That you present your bodies. A living sacrifice. Now, I thought you were supposed to present your money a living sacrifice. Read it again. That you present your bodies. Your money. Your body. Come on. A living sacrifice. So your our bodies are now a living sacrifice. Come on. And we're going to get into that living sacrifice in a minute. Read. Holy. Holy. Acceptable unto God. Uh-huh. Which is your reasonable service. So it is our reasonable service that our bodies be presented as a holy sacrifice. That's our reasonable service. In other words, this is the least that we can do now that we've heard the word of God, we've heard the voice of Christ, and we're walking in the direction of Christ. Give me the definition of sacrifice. Put that up there. Go ahead. Sacrifice, an act of offering to a deity something precious. Something what? Precious. It says an act of offering to a deity, a higher power, Something precious. We're going to get into what that something precious is. All right? Is that it on that? Yeah, that's, the, that's all I want. So this is our reasonable service. The Lord Jesus Christ has called us from a pile of dung, a pile of poop, into this glorious information right here, into this marvelous light that we now walk in that we should be putting on. He done called us out of a, 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 out of a, 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 a toilet bowl into this gospel 
and we now have to we, we should be we should we should glorify him in that and we should be following that all right shalom israel this is bishop nathaniel i want you to know that you can view all our sabbath classes live on iuic tv that's right i said on iuic tv download the app today shalom Read on to verse 2. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. Come on. And be not conformed to this world. So he says, don't be conformed to this world. I've called you out of the world. We just read that in the previous chapter in John. He said, I called you out of the world. So don't, do not be conformed to this world. Read. But be ye transformed. Be ye transformed. What transforms us? The commandments. Be ye transformed. By the renewing of your mind. We got to renew our minds according to the will of God, according to the word. Come on. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That we may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God, which is Psalm 40 and 8. We ain't going to go there right now, but go on, read verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me. That what? Through the grace given unto me. Through the grace given unto me. Come on. To every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Come on. But to think soberly. According as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So what we got to take into account from verse 3 is that there's a measure of grace and a measure of faith given to us all. You know what I mean? When we come in, we come in them doors, we sit around and we look and we're like, hmm, this is nice. All right, a month pass, two months pass, three months. What, 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 what do we do? We got to find something to do. We got to put our hands to the plow. There's a measure of faith. And a measure of grace granted to us all. Only you can determine what your what what your what your works are gonna be at the end of the grace and the faith that you have. Only you can determine that thing. Um, give me Second Timothy chapter two and verse fifteen. All right, Second Timothy two two fifteen. It's the book of Second Timothy chapter two verse fifteen. Study to show thyself approved. Do what? Study to show thyself approved unto God. It takes faith to, to understand that. And hey, you got to go study. The faith, the faith in Christ and the keeping of these commandments is going to resurrect something in your mind where you understand that. In order for you to have the faith, in order for you to be able to persevere in this truth, you got to study. You got to study. That, that's a sacrifice. You got to sacrifice the time to go study. You got to sacrifice uh, playing video games. You got to uh, put down put down TV, watching basketball and knowing every stat. Some of y'all preparing for the Super Bowl right now. You know all the stats that they done, that they done, uh been keeping all year long on each team and, and making wages and bets on what or who's going to win the Super Bowl. We got to put that stuff down. We got to sacrifice the time to go study. Read it again. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Uh-huh. A workman. A what? That a workman. This is the key. The Lord has called us to be workmen in this vineyard. A workman. That needeth not to be ashamed. Uh-huh. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So as we study, as we get our minds right by studying and, and applying the application of God's laws, read that bottom part again. We become a what? A workman. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. You can't, you won't be ashamed. Or confound it when you're, in, when you're inside of these scriptures, when you make that sacrifice to sit down and apply yourself. Come on. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. But why do we study? Is it just for you? Give me 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. Because when we open this Bible up, when you come into this truth, when you start learning, you start seeing all the brothers around you, you're going you're gonna to attach to certain spirits, especially if you believe and you understand that there's levels to this thing and you want to advance through these levels. There's no advancement without sitting down and applying, your, you're applying yourself to study. This is why we study. Read. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 15. Come on. But sanctify the Lord in your, the Lord God in your hearts. 
And Sanctify the Lord God in your heart, in your mind. Come on. And be ready always. And do what? And be ready always. We must always be ready to what? To give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. Because when they see us, they're supposed to see something different. Like, dang, what is it that keeps you motivated? Why do you move like this? Why do you do things like that? Because of the hope that is in me. They're supposed to ask questions of that hope that is in us. What keeps you motivated to move and do the way, do the things you do? Like Bishop say, he ain't always motivated. All right? He ain't, what, how, how, did, how did the saying go? He says, I'm not always motivated, but I'm always disciplined. You got to be disciplined enough to sit down and apply the commandments of God. Apply yourself to study. Give me that in Sirach 33, verse 17. The book of Sirach, chapter 33, verse 17. Consider that I labored not for myself only. Hold on. So what's that labor? We just read that in Timothy. The labor is sitting down, sacrificing time to study. Read it again. Consider that I labored not for myself only. Consider that I don't study for myself only. Come on. But for all them that seek learning. For all them that seek learning of that hope that we read in Peter. For all them that seek learning. For the hope that we just read that is in you, read. Hear me, O ye great men of the people. That's all I want from that. So studying requires us, requires sacrifice. Uh, we got to put away the games. We got to put away basketball stats. We got to put down the blunts. You know what I mean? We got to stop chasing box and rod. That's what we got to do. We got to become righteous men and women. Even that in Luke chapter 7 and verse 31. And all of this is going to require sacrifice. Now, this is just on a low level sacrifice. This is on a low level. You know what I mean? Because today we're tied up in all of these foolishness. Christ gave us a comparison to the mindset that we should have, but the mindset of men and women today. Read that. It's the book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 31. Come on. And the Lord said, whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? What are the, what are the men of this generation like? Basketball, football, damn God, whatever, whatever, whatever it is outside of the scriptures and, and becoming righteousness that we give our attention to. Christ said, what shall I liken the men of this generation to? Read. And to what are they like? What are they like? Read. They are like unto children. They are like children. They are like a bunch of children sitting around playing damn Xbox. Read. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. Uh-huh. And calling one to another. Calling one to another in the marketplace. Come on. And saying, we have piped unto you, uh -huh. and ye have not danced. Read. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. Come on. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. He ain't come eating bread or drinking wine. Read. And ye say he had the devil. The son of man has come eating and drinking, and ye say, behold, a gluttonous man. So that's all I want on that. But the point is we got to put away childish things. I tell y'all late on that stuff, bro. Y'all gotta uh, unless y'all just getting it for later. But we gotta stop playing. We gotta stop playing games because the sacrifice that we're gonna be required to make, you gotta get built up for that level. And it ain't just opening the Bible and reading and then just you know going on about your day. We gotta really be meditating on what Christ did and what we're gonna have to do uh, as followers of Christ. All right, give me the First Peter chapter two and verse five. It's the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 5. Ye also, as lively stones. So when we get, as we start studying and get built up, your mind changes. Read that again. Ye also, as lively stones. We become lively stones. Come on. Are built up a spiritual house. We build up that spiritual house by studying it, studying applications, spa, like bishops say. Read. And holy priesthood. Become a what? And holy priesthood. Read. To offer up spiritual sacrifice. To offer up spiritual sacrifice. Come on. Acceptable to God. We got to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God. That's what we read in the book of Romans. All right. Read that in Romans again. Go back to Romans 12 and 1. Back to Romans 12 and 1. Read that again. It's the book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, uh -huh. holy, acceptable unto God, uh -huh. which is your reasonable service. So we become holy, acceptable to God, 
which is our reasonable service, all right? Go back to that in 1 Peter chapter 2 and 5. Read that again. The book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Ye also as lively stones uh -huh. are built up a spiritual house. So we get built up through study, application, read. And holy priesthood. Read. To offer up spiritual sacrifices. All of this is to, we building, we're building ourselves up to, off, to be offered as a spiritual sacrifice. Read. Acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So once you're built up, you got a job now. You come in, you start learning, you get built up. Now you get a job. You got to go and build your people up. You, our job is to go and create more lively stones. Give me Luke chapter 14 and verse 23. Our job is to go out and build up our people. Once we come in and we learn, after you learn, you're an Israelite, it's, it's millions of our people out there that still have to come into this truth, if it be the Lord's will. But it's our job to go out there and compel them, to teach them that you're the Israelites. You're going to mark everybody that is an, that's an Israelite so that in that day they won't be able to say that they didn't know. Read. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, uh -huh. go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. Well, you can't do that. If you don't apply yourself to study, if you don't sacrifice the time to study. Read it again. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges uh -huh. and compel them to come in. Read on. That my house may be filled. That the house of God, the house of God, the house of Israel may be filled. Read. For I say unto you that none of these men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Read. Uh, from there, let's get uh, Luke chapter 17. And verse 33. So to sacrifice means to put it all on the line, all right? That's what, that's what we come here to do. We can't, if you're here, if you believe, what you're going to do, you gonna have, you got to put it on the line. Your life is now on the line. The life that Christ lived is the life that we have to live, and it's all on the line. Just like what, what, happened, what happened with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the same thing is going to befall the followers of Christ as we have as we've, as we've read and understand with the apostles, and with the prophets of old. Read. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 23. Come on. Whosoever shall seek to save his life. So whosoever shall seek to save his life, that's us out here, you know, you trying to live the, uh, you want to live the big life. You need the big house, the big car. You need to, you're not focused on nothing that got to do with salvation. Read it again. Whosoever shall seek to save his life. Say whosoever shall seek to save his life. Read. Shall lose it. You're going to lose that life. Come on. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. And whosoever shall lose their life in this kingdom, lose their life on this earth, put all of the, the filth and the glitz, glitz and glamour that America has put before our eyes. Got to put that behind us when we come into this truth. We got to put that stuff to the side and focus on the one vision that we got, which is eternal life, the kingdom of heaven, which is going to require a sacrifice. Read on. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. No, that's all I want. Read 33 again. Verse 33. Whosoever shall seek to save his life uh -huh. shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. So Christ wants us to lose our life. All right? We're going to have to give our life just like he gave his. Drop that. Give me 2 Corinthians 4. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 4, 14 through 17. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 14. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up, raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Read on. For which cause we faint not. Uh -huh. But though our outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Read verse 16 again. For which cause we faint not. So knowing that we're going to have to give our life for this gospel, knowing that we're going to have to live the life that Christ lived, we should not faint. It says for which cause we faint not. Read on. But though our outward man perish. Though the outward man is going to perish. Come on. Yet. The inward man is renewed day by day. Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. That's why Paul said, I die daily because this is a spiritual walk. 
you're not it ain't the only way the only way you can die daily is to look at the things around you and really be fighting against those things. You gotta wake up every day and look at the same demon that you that you killed yesterday is right before you again today. It's right before you every every day you wake up is death. We can't never take the thought that that those demons are that they're far gone. Remember, Christ Christ said that the, the that Satan leaves for a season, but he's coming back. Read verse 16 again. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Verse 14 again. Verse 14. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus. So it says, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus. Come on. Shall raise up us also by Jesus. So he shall raise us up by Jesus. Read. And shall present us with you. And we shall be presented with him. Come on. For all things are for your sake. Uh Uh-huh. That the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Uh Uh-huh. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Give me Psalms chapter 50, 13 and 14. Psalms chapter 50. All right, read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 13. Will I eat the flesh of bulls? So, <laughs> most I said, will I eat the flesh of bulls, read? Or drink the blood of goats? Uh-huh. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the most high. So what is our vow that we must pay? It's going to be, that's going to be a sacrifice. Hold on, let me read over. I think I want to start at, um... Start read verse 8. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 8. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. That's that animal sacrifice. Come on. I will take no bullock out of thy house. Both sides say he don't want no bullocks. Come on. Nor he goats. He don't want no goats. Out of thy fold. Read. For every beast of the forest is mine. He said all, all of that is mine already. Plus, we already did that. And it yielded no results. Come on. And the cattle upon a thousand hills. Read. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. Read on. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee. God, he said, if I was hungry, I, w- I wouldn't tell you. That ain't. That is not what the sacrifice is about. This ain't what he's looking for. Read. For the world is mine. The world is the Lord's. Come on. And the fullness thereof. Read on. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? He said, will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? No. Come on. Offer unto God thanksgiving. Offer unto God thanksgiving. We're going to find out what that thanksgiving is. Read. And pay thy vows unto the Most High. And pay our vows to the Most High. Psalms chapter 116, 14 through 19. 116, 14 through 19. What is the sacrifice that the Lord is requiring from the service, from the saints? Uh, Verse 14. The book of Psalm, chapter 116, verse 14. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. We just read that over in Psalms 50, 13 through 14, to pay, to pay our vows. Come on. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So us paying our vow is the death of the saints. Read that again. Precious in the sight of the Lord. Is the death of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So this ain't talking about no money. The sacrifice ain't talking about you bringing some money and, and, and having the pastor do a suck and a job over it. No. Nah. Christ said, you, 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 you shall indeed drink of that cup. If you want to live the life I live, you're going to drink this cup. Read on. Oh, Lord, truly, I am thy servant. Uh-huh. I am thy servant and the son of thine handmaid. Read. Thou hast loosed my bonds. Loosed our bonds of what? The bonds of this flesh. The bonds of sin here on this earth. Read. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. The sacrifice of thanksgiving is you giving your life, being put to death. Come on. And will call upon the name of the Lord. Uh Uh-huh. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now. What do you say? What do you say? I will pay my vows unto the Lord now. So this is the sacrifice. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now. In the presence of all his people. Come on. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. Give me Psalms chapter 72. Psalms chapter 72, 12 through 14. It's 
the book of Psalms, chapter 72 and verse 12. For he shall deliver the needy when he crieth, the poor also, and him that no that hath no helper. That ain't nothing but black people. <laughs> like, that's the Israelites. That's the Israelites. Read it again. For he shall deliver the needy when he crieth. If there was ever a people needy, it's so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Come on. The poor also, and him that hath no help. Read on. He shall spare the poor and needy. He's going to spare the poor and needy. Come on. And save the souls of the needy. And save the souls of the needy. Come on. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence. So he's going to redeem our souls. How is he going to redeem it? What has to happen for, for him to redeem our souls? We're going to be put to death. Come on. And precious shall their blood be in his sight. He says, and precious shall his blood be, or shall our blood be in his sight. That's 14. Give me a couple more scriptures. I ain't have a whole lot. Second Ezra, chapter 2, 42. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 2, and verse 42. I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of them there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns. So this, we, we're we all hoping and praying for this day. I know when, especially brothers, when they first come into this too, they're like, damn, bro, I hope and pray. I want to be one. I want to be 144. All brothers say that. If you don't say that, there's something something wrong with you. Like, I don't, I don't know where your mind at. You different. You know what I mean? But that's something that I know most men say when they come and they understand that there's going to be 144,000, all right? And brothers are like, I need a piece of that. This is the day that we all look for. This is the sacrifice that we're going to have. The, the sacrifice that we make is you only going to get it. You're only going to obtain this through that sacrifice. Read it again. Go to verse 2, uh, 43. Verse 43. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest. Mm -hmm. And upon every one of their heads, he set crown. That's what we, this is what our sacrifice is going to be for, to get that crown. Read. And was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. Read on. So I asked the angel and said, sir, what are these? And he answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing. So these be they that have put off the mortal clothing, the mundane, the earthly things. Come on. And put on the immortal. We are put on the immortal, putting on the commandments, put on that whole armor, which is Christ, and becoming immortal. Come on. And have confessed the name of God. You think when you confess the name of God, right now there's no persecution. Like we ain't going through a whole bunch right now. But in this day, we have already we would have already went through a whole lot of, of, of persecution. You're not going to profess the name of God and, th and think that persecution ain't coming. Persecution is coming, man. They are already preparing for it. Read. Now are they crowned. And now are they crowned. They confess the name of God, and now are they crowned. And receive Paul. Come on. Then said I unto the angel, what young person is it that crowneth them? Read. And giveth them palms in their hands. Read on. So he answered and said unto me, it is the Son of God. It is the Son of God. Come on. Whom they have confessed in the world. So when we, conf if we once we... As we confess, I ain't going to say once because it's being confessed right now, today. As we continue to confess our Lord and Savior here in America, on this earth, that persecution is going to come. Read. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood stiffly for the name of the Lord. So when you stand stiffly for God, guess what's going to happen? Persecution is going to come. Death is coming. That sacrifice. And this is what we ought to understand and continually meditate on and get our souls right and get our minds right for what is to come. The sacrifice is going to be all you're going to really sacrifice when them folks knock on your door, when they come when they when they come to clean the clean house because you a commandment keeper. When they spot them fringes on you in the grocery store, when they spot them fringes on you walking down the street and they hem you up, what's going to be your mentality or your mindset then? Now I ain't saying that hey, a lot of us ain't ready for it, but we better get ready. We got to be ready. We got to understand that in order to see the glory that the Lord has set up for us, we're going to have to give our life. The sacrifice ain't the money. The sacrifice is you putting your life on the line and not denying Christ. 
not deli- not blasphemy that in that day when it's your turn to stand before the persecutor. Read on. Then the angel said unto me, Go thy way and tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders of the Lord thy God thou hast seen. So that's what's been coming out of this Bible for the last 10 years that I've been in this truth. And we got our, our leadership has hundreds of years uh, studying this Bible together. The word is out. Israel, we got to repent, we got to keep the commandments, and we got to prepare ourselves to be sacrificed for this gospel if we want to see, if we want to see the kingdom that is set before us. All right, give me Romans chapter 6 and 13 real quick. Romans, let me get that. I'm a little slow. Go ahead. This is the book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as as instruments of unrighteousness. So we cannot yield our members as instruments of unrighteousness. Come on. Unto sin. Unto what? Unto sin. Come on. But yield yourselves unto God. We must yield ourselves unto God. Read. As those that are alive from the dead. Hey, hold on. Wait, read, read that again. But yield yourselves unto God. We got to yield ourselves unto God. As those that are alive from the dead. What you mean alive from the dead? Alive from the dead, meaning your life is now, <laughs> your life is now glorified because you've been put to death. That's the only way you can become alive from the dead. Read. And your members as instruments of righteousness. And now our members are instruments of righteousness. Come on. Unto God. Read. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Sin can't have dominion over us. Read. And you are not under the law, but under grace. Don't let a Christian hear that. Read on. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law? Jump to verse 16. Verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. Read. Whether of sin unto whether, um, whether of sin unto death, come on. Or of obedience unto righteousness. Or obedience unto righteousness. So again, Israel, that's gonna conclude my uh, my section for today. But we got to always remember that what's being pushed uh, in society as the sacrifice, giving your money and and, and coming to the altar and, and bringing a thousand dollars. That ain't what this is talking about. This Bible and in, in, in inheriting the kingdom of life is talking about us sacrificing our life like Christ sacrificed his life unto death. All right. So with that, I'm Officer Kalia uh, with Daily Bread. Hope you all got something out of that. Uh, Lord's will catch y'all on the next one. With that, you have a good day. Shalom. Most high in Christ bless. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is